Welcome to this lesson 7 called Believe that the harvest is ready. Last time we talked about how the harvest is ready, the harvest is plentiful, as Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, and what we looked at also in John 4. But we need to believe it. It's not enough to just hear about it, we need to believe that the harvest is ready. I will start to read from John chapter 4 this time. Let me read here again. Jesus is saying this, Do you not say there are still four months and then the harvest will come? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. So what I want us to understand is that we need to believe this. It's not enough to hear that the harvest is ready, that the harvest is plentiful, as I talked about last time. We need to believe it. And then we need to act on it, and then we need to experience it. And I want, want to share more testimonies. I can share so many, many, many testimonies about this, how important it is that we not only hear about it, but that we believe it or act on it and how that the harvest is ready, as Jesus is saying. The best way to teach somebody something is to show it. And we try to show you out there through our videos and through testimonies, to our movies, that the harvest is ready. We, we try to show people to our Kickstarter weekends and training that the harvest is ready, the harvest is plentiful, as Jesus is saying. But now we need to start to believe it. One testimony I can share for, it's many years ago now, but it's a good testimony still who, who show how important it is how we look at the harvest. Some years ago I went to Poland and um, I first came to a church there a big church, and I was telling testimony of what God was doing in Denmark and all over the world, and they were like, whoa, it's so beautiful, it's so beautiful, so what God is doing in Denmark and all over the world where you have been, it's so beautiful what God is doing there, 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 and there, but, 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 and then it always comes the but, but this place is not ready. Like it's always, the grass is always green on the other side, but this place, no, no. And they said, no, no, here in Poland, people don't want that. No, no, it's beautiful in other countries, but this country, people are not ready. No, no, you cannot just go out on the street and, 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 and share Jesus. You cannot do all of that because the harvest is not ready here. I've heard that so many times. I almost get tired of I get tired of hearing pastors and leaders always blame the harvest for why things are not happening. Blame the harvest from why there is no newborn believer in the church, for example. I've never yet heard a really honest pastor. It would be nice one day to come a place and meet a very, very honest pastor who says something like this, Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our church. Yeah, as you can see around us, we don't see any people come to faith. And the reason is not because of the harvest, because the harvest is ready. The reason is that we are so lazy. We are so lazy and we don't go out and we don't do what Jesus said to us. <laughs> I've never heard that, but that is more the truth than to say that the harvest is the problem. Because as we read, Last time, the harvest is not a problem, the problem are the workers, and we're going to look more about that later. But here I came to that church in Poland, and they came with the same excuses again and again. Yeah, you cannot do it here in Poland, they're too religious, or sometimes they say they're too non-religious, or they're too rich or too poor. And they just said, you cannot do it. I, have they tried? No, they haven't. But they know, they know it's still, let's try but not the way I do it. But next day I went to McDonald's with some of the young people in the church. And there I sat on McDonald's and I asked some of the young people, I asked them, hey, have you ever experienced God? Yeah, yeah, have you? Yeah. Do you want to experience God? And they said, yes. Do everything I tell you the next 10 minutes and you have experienced God. Are you ready? And they said, yes. Come, let's stand up, let's go out. And I took them out. And I kickstart both of them in 10 minutes and they got so excited and experienced this and they were on 
fire. What happened? They just keep doing, keep doing. And that night we spoke with a young girl who got healed. The next day in church, that young girl came to the church with her brother, her big brother, small brother, and her parents, and they all came out, gave their life to Christ, got baptized with the Holy Spirit, and God transformed their life. And it was a big, big, big testimony for the whole church. Why? Because the leadership, the pastors before that have said, no, you cannot do it, you cannot do it, you cannot do it. People are not ready, the harvest is not ready, you cannot do like that in our city. And then we went out and did it. And their eyes got open. And that is a problem that we sit in our small caves. We sit in our little box, fill up with fear. And with crazy ideas, ideas that a harvest is not ready, ideas that we cannot go out, the ideas can we, that we cannot share Jesus to our neighbors, to our friends, out of our home, in our home. All of that is lies. And we need to break out of that and need to understand what the Jesus is saying because his words are the truth. Another example for Poland is that then I turned around Poland and then I came to a man called Michael. He was pastor from a small, small church, and he did not have much faith when he came to the harvest. How did I know that? Because what the heart is full of is running over. And his words was just like, no, no, nothing is happening in my church. Nobody wants God, you know, want to receive the Holy Spirit. No one are open for healing. No one wants deliverance. No one wants to go out. My church. And he was just like, he's, he was just full up of unbelief when he came to his own church. And I came there and I tried to encourage him, come on Michael, God he can do it, come on God he can do it, I've seen it there and there and there and there and there. But he just keep going, no, no, my place, oh, and he had so much unbelief. What your heart is full of is running over. But I had a meeting in his church and I took a woman up in his church who wanted the Holy Spirit. Michael had never seen one person in his church receive the Holy Spirit. I took that woman up and then I called Michael up and instead of me praying for her, I put that woman there, Michael there and said, Michael, now you pray. And there Michael prayed and that woman received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues and what happened? Michael's eyes was open. The harvest in his church did not change, so the people around him in the city did not change. Michael changed. His eyes was open for that one experience, what I call he got kickstarted there. <laughs> one year later I received a message from Michael and this is what he wrote to me and I'll read it here. He wrote, Torben, I would like to share something with you. This year eight persons in our church have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and they are all speaking in tongues now. When you came to us, you showed us something very important and this started something inside of me and it has just grown and grown. God is good and we now expect even more things to happen. God bless you, Michael. Hallelujah. I have seen so many testimonies like this the last years. Don't build on your experience. Never build truth on experience. Why? Experience can change overnight. Build on the Word of God. What did Michael do? Michael had been building on his experience and his experience was no one want the Holy Spirit, no one is open, and he came into a very negative way of thinking. But what happened that day I came? He, uh, his eyes got open, he learned something very, very important. And instead of building on experience, lack of experience, bad experience, he got that one kickstart and he started to believe what the Word was saying. And the next year, everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit in the church, eight people there, and it just started to grow, 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 and they had grown since, and they keep growing. And this is the same with you, don't build on your experience. 
built on the word of God. The word of God is the truth, not your experience. The harvest is ready, like Jesus is saying. I want to read more from my book here. When a Christian is awakened and start to live the life God has called them to, they will see that the harvest is truly ready, as Jesus says. It is. And this is what I call revival. The problem is not the harvest. No, the problem is the workers. But we can do something about that. Think about what would happen if the whole body of Christ had their eyes open so they could start living life the way Jesus has called us to live it. If this happened, the world will be changed in a few years. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. If you, if you who see this, just start, just begin to believe this and lead four or five people to Christ and let them experience the same in a few years. The world will be changed. It can go so fast if we start to see it and teach it to other people. And we all start to lead people to Christ in our everyday life. We don't need one super evangelist. One super evangelist cannot do it. We need a husband. We need a wife. We need you who are older. We need you who are younger. We need you to see that where you live, the harvest is ready. Your neighbors, your workplace, people around you. When you start to see the harvest the way Jesus is saying it, and start to believe it and act on it, this would be a normal life for you, where you also start to lead people to Christ. He to say, cast out demons, baptize people in water and Holy Spirit. But I want to continue reading here from a book. So believe what Jesus is saying. The harvest in your city is plentiful and ready, waiting for you. We are not talking about it being ready in three months or three years. It is ready today. The harvest is not the problem and will never be the problem. It is time to open your eyes and to see this. Take Jesus' word and meditate on it. Pray that God will open your eyes to see the truth. When you start believing what Jesus is saying here, you will act on it and end up experiencing it. Then you will also be able to testify to get with us and many others that the harvest is truly ready and plentiful just like Jesus is saying whoa what amazing news and this is what I say like really when you start to take these words and believe it and then act on it you will together with us and many other people start to testify it's the truth the harvest is plentiful. The harvest is ready. Don't say there is still four months and then the harvest will come. Like Jesus say, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are ready, white for harvest. Behold, lift up your eyes. I really encourage you to take this, believe in it, and start to act on it. It's not enough you just have faith in it. Faith without action is dead. If you say you have faith, you need action. True faith leads to action. So you first start to believe it, or you hear it first, and then you believe it, but then you need to Act on it. And when you act on it, you will see that this is the truth. And I also say, stop, stop praying like the harvest is not ready. Stop confessing. Stop saying, oh, there's still four months or next year or in two years. Stop, stop being used by the enemy by saying those lies and bring fears and lies to other people. We have so many people who are speaking so negative about the harvest and they make themselves blind because of their unbelief. Yes, we will still meet people out there who don't want to listen. And there is people where we just need to take the dust off our hand and feet and move on like Jesus also is saying. And something we are going to look at later. 
But for those people out there who are ready, for those people who want God, they are many and they are so ready. And I want to say with my book, The Call of Jesus, in this video series, we want to help you. We are here to help you. I'm here to help you. Yes, maybe some of you have bad experience, but maybe it's because you are done it the wrong way. And that's why you have bad experience. We are here to help you, to give you those good experiences, so you can start to see that this is the truth. And again, the best way to show the truth, to teach the truth, is by experiencing it. The best way to teach is by showing it. So one thing I encourage you to do, if you have never been out praying for somebody who could heal, or never baptized somebody, or lead somebody to Christ, go to tlrmap.com and find somebody near you who can, who can help you, who can take you out and, and show you that the harvest is ready, give you good experience, and then you start to see it there, and you start to believe it, and then you start to act on it, and then you start to see the fruit. Another way, if you can, join the Kickstarter weekend. We have so many, 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 many testimonies for people who came to our kickstarts and it transformed their life. I remember one guy, he came from Slovakia and he came to Holland. He had been in church 40 years. In 40 years, he had never healed us, cast out a demon or led one person to Christ. He came to our kickstart weekend and he got kickstarted. He understood that the harvest was ready. The harvest in his country did not change, but he changed. He came home. 40 years have not led one person to Christ. The next year he baptized eight people. There was eight more than the first 40 years. But he keep learning, he keep growing, and the next year he baptized 107. What happened? Did the harvest change in his country? No, he changed, and he keep changing, he keep learning, he keep growing. So the first step, what you can do, go to tlrmap.com, find somebody near you, and experience firsthand that harvest is ready. Next step, if you can, come and join a Kickstart weekend. I really encourage you to go to map, tlrmap.com, join a Kickstart near you. A third thing, just go and do it. Just go and do it. Just go out, start. That was how I did it. I did not have anyone to show me. I read Jesus' word, the harvest is ready. Okay, if the harvest is ready, we need to believe that, and then we need to act on it. And then now I can confirm it, the harvest is truly ready, like Jesus is saying. So act on it. And then, of course, pray God to set you free from those lies. As I said, I know many people who have been sitting in church for 20 years, 30 years. Nothing has happened. If that is you, then it's really, really on time that things start to happen. It is really time for you to come out of that box, to come out of that fear, say and put into your life, and to understand that the harvest is ready, the harvest is plentiful and then do something about it. Believe it and act on it. If you don't have people around you, then just do it yourself. About our book, The Call of Jesus, there's so much more I'm saying about this in my book. I come with so many more testimonies about how the harvest is ready and how we should look at the harvest and, and how to work with this. I encourage you to get the book. You can get it on Amazon.com or you can get it through our website, thelastrevelmission.com. You can get the book as an e-book or as a print, hard copy, copy book. And I encourage you to get the book. If you don't have money, you can send an email to us and to us through the last reformation at mail at the last and we can give you a code where you can get it for free as an ebook. God bless you. See you next time. Share the video and let's see a revival. Let's see that people start to believe that the harvest is ready and do something about it. Bye bye.